Hello again, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. This is a ceiling fan motor. This is the cover. It was, you press it on, and when you go to take them off, hold them like this, give it a spin. Hang on the outside evenly until it comes loose. I'm not going to torture your ears with that. I figured that was enough to show you how it was done. Just coming down on the edge to knock it off and holding it at the other end. This one here, as you can see, has a the paint stops here and goes to here. That's because this one overlaps and goes there. This makes a nice tight fit. And I uh, threw away the induction ring on this one. The magnets will go in line with the coils. This one's wound clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. If there's a space between this coil and this coil on your ceiling fan, then you put your magnet north, south, north, south all the way around. The same thing on this one because this was clockwise, counterclockwise is still north, south, north, south. Don't go north and then south and north because those coils will all be wound the same way on the other one to have the gaps in between. Now this one here has one phase, a single phase all the way around. This is my red and black wire that you see right here. And then I have a blue and white one which take the inside. This one has no taps. It's only a two-speed motor is okay for me. Um, this says 120 volts on the label right there. 120 volts, one amp. That means 120 watts. One times 120. Current times amp, uh, voltage equals uh, wattage or power. Okay. Well, I'm only going to get 120 watts. Well, you got two sets of coils. Let's try 240 watts. But then again, this wire is only so thick. A fuse is rated in amps because the outside surface of it can only dissipate so much heat as so much current runs through it. So this wire can only handle one amp. Putting these in parallel, I can get two amps out. And I can put, I put the magnets all the way from here, stack them and close that gap as much as possible to get the highest voltage possible. And then run these in parallel through your uh, diode bridge rectifiers. It's better to tra travel your AC down the pole with four wires than it is to, to run DC down the pole with one wire. Okay, anyway, to finish up on the, this point here, this, while I'm generating electricity on these coils, this one's at zero until I get to here. Then this is, these coils on the outside are at zero and these are going. Show you a quick example. Uh, we interrupt your regularly scheduled part there mainly because it wasn't able to be seen. The light was too bright and this looked washed out. If this is coil one going like this, looking at the red all the way through, and coil two came in, and was just slight uh, one quarter phase out. This means rectification of coil 1 being red. This is positive, this is negative. This is all positive up here. This is the zero line. This would be your negative swing. After going through the diodes, your red wave would look like this. Kind of look like the golden arches, but red. At this point, you've got zero voltage. Same thing at this point and this point on this wave. Now, with phase 2 added to it, you've got this. Here's what I'm saying. While this is going negative, with the diode, it makes that positive. Here's positive here, it's positive here. Here's negative here, it's positive here. This is this wave. It's a little out of done because I've done this. But when you put these together, here's your... Here's this wave turned positive, half of the wave turned positive. Here's this half of the wave turned positive. This half of the wave turned positive. This half of the wave turned positive. Notice that your charging voltage, when these are put together, is never at zero. That's the wonderful part of it all. So these are almost like three phase, but it's not. I guess you'd have to call it a biphase or a double phase. Okay, and what I didn't show you was 
this line right here is above your battery uh, is your battery voltage or above your battery voltage if this is zero then you wind up with a D a pulsed or a slight ripple in your DC that's above rather than having this going to zero and then charging and then zero and going to charging you wind up with this instead a ripple above your battery voltage that ain't working now there we go it'll be above your battery voltage this area right here if this is 12 volts or 24 volts whichever you're using and this is the voltage above however many volts above your battery voltage is your charging is uh, the voltage that creates the amps going into your battery if your voltage is down here the diodes are in line nothing's going into your battery nothing's coming from the battery going to the wind turbine when the voltage comes up above your battery voltage that's charging that's all charging voltage none of it is going to zero if I was on a single wave or a single set of coils it would come down to zero and then come back up and you'd only wind up with this much charge in time then this much charge in time this charges all the time this is what's good now I'll return you back to your regularly scheduled program anyway 12 volts if you're putting 15 volts then you're only putting 3 volts above your battery voltage in there and that creates your charging if I'm putting 24 volts in it's going to throw more amps in so figuring all of that um, when you find out what your total voltage is after you've got your deals here then go down and buy some twenty dollar lawn tractor batteries and start putting them in series till you get um, anywhere within 10 to 15 volts close to your uh, uh, below your uh, output voltage to here now the wind is wild as it starts to put more amps in it's gonna the draw on the batteries is gonna slow it down a little bit I haven't blown one yet I have ruined a coil while doing all this but anyway um, I'm going to get back to you with another video because I don't have much time left on the memory on this camera. Scott Brown, Green Wind and Other Home Energies. Many good things to you and yours.